2020 has been a pretty crazy year. Political drama, warfare aside, we all know the big C word that literally put the world on pause for the last couple of months. Millions of people from around the world are affected by this crisis, but one aspect of life that was severely affected is the world of sports. It makes sense why. Sweating and being extremely close to another individual with a disease that spreads like wildfire, it's a pretty good enough reason to put a temporary pause on the event. And we all know athletes take it very seriously. However, even during this time of terror, one man seems to be determined to not let the crisis affect him or his business. And I'm of course referring to Mr. Dana White himself, the face of the UFC and the man who should be credited for the rise in mixed martial arts and making it a professional sport in the last 20 years is a guy who wants stuff done his way. Trying his best to move event locations from international waters on the week of the event for hosting scheduled events on Indian reserves while well, that just wasn't going to cut it. Dana White had to think outside the box and boy did he ever. Dana White has apparently purchased a remote island to host UFC events on a weekly to monthly basis. Let me repeat that one more time. A super rich bald guy has purchased an entire island to have athletes fight in a steel cage for thousands of fans to watch. This is a plot for a movie where the Avengers will eventually need to step in and put a stop to this. Whatever the status is, Fight Island is a real thing and the UFC is moving forward with the UFC 249 in May, along with other scheduled events. With previous postponed fights, there are a lot of great fights to make and as a fan, we are excited to finally see some action. I'm Sasha Mox and today I'm jumping over the cage to talk about 5 of the most exciting upcoming fights on Dana White's Fight Island. Before we start our list, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. We post weekly MMA list videos and we are definitely listening to all the feedback. Comment below which fight you're most excited for and if you have any list ideas, make sure you let us know. Number 5. Jeremy Stevens vs Calvin Cater This is a great fight and can distinctively decide the career trajectories of both fighters. The UFC's featherweight division is slowly shaping up to be one of the most stacked and competitive divisions of the sport with so many high level fighters in a top 10 alone. Both men are one year apart, but in terms of MMA experience, that gap is significantly different. Lil Heathen has been a veteran of the sport for years. His first UFC appearance dated all the way back to UFC 71 in 2007, yes. That was 13 years ago. Jeremy Stevens is known for his tough attitude and his will to never give up, but he is also equally known for his violent finishes. Stevens' career has its ebbs and flows, as it never seems he can get enough momentum to push him to the top of a title contention fight. He is now riding a three fight losing streak to Jose Aldo, Zabit, and Yair, while on the other side, we have the Boston finisher, Calvin Cater. His first UFC appearance was in 2017 at UFC 214. Yes, that's the gap I'm talking about. Cater looks to be one of the division's biggest prospects, however he was recently derailed by Zabi. Cater is looking to push beyond Stevens and really maintain himself as a resurged top 5 fighter, while Stevens is going to want to keep himself out of the divisional gatekeeper picture once again. Number 4, Donald Cowboy Cerrone vs Anthony Pettis 2 Two future Hall of Famers, Anthony Pettis vs Donald Cerrone was recently added to the stack fights released by the UFC to christen the new fight island. It's a smart strategy by Dana White as both these guys always bring entertainment in their fights and will get the crowd on their feet. Both of these guys have earned the respect of the entire MMA world and who knows how many more fights we as fans can get to enjoy by these two warriors. The first time they met, they were both superstars in the making. Pettis was 15 and 2 and Cerrone was 19 and 4. Pettis was able to put on a clinic by defeating Cerrone in the first round in a title elimination fight which led to Pettis winning his first UFC title. Both men are now aged veterans who are on a bit of a down streak. Pettis is on a two fight losing streak with one of those being an entertaining match with Nate Diaz while Donald Cerrone is on a three fight losing streak However, let's put a big disclaimer, he lost to Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje, and Conor McGregor. These guys bring it every single time they compete, are fan favorites and overall competitors that have shaped this sport to what it is today. We cannot wait to see this fight and we really hope they bring the heat. Number 3, Henry Cejudo vs Dominic Cruz for the Bantamweight title. 
Triple C meets the divisional GOAT. This is a fight that happened by chance, really. Henry Cejudo has been on a bit of a tear, winning the featherweight and then the bantamweight title. His cringy gimmick aside, Cejudo is a great fighter. Originally, this fight was scheduled to be Cejudo vs Aldo, but with Brazil facing the harsh end of the crisis, Dominic Cruz stepped up and took Aldo's spot. Cejudo is on a 5 fight winning streak, defeating Demetrius Johnson, TJ Dillasa, and Marlon Moraes. Say what you want, but Cejudo is a proven monster. The Dominator, Dominic Cruz, was the face of the bantamweight division for almost 5 years. He defended his belt against Uriah Faber, Demetrius Johnson, Joseph Benavides, and TJ Dillashaw. His injuries aside, there is a reason why they call him one of the greatest of all times. His technical fighting style is nothing short of amazing, and his amazing will to never let the concept of ring rust affect him is just a thing of beauty. We last saw Cruz compete in 2016, where he lost his belt to that version of Cody Garbrandt, rest in peace, one of the best versions of Cody Garbrandt and potentially one of the greatest bantamweight fighters ever. It's been almost four years, but if anyone can come back from a long layoff and fight for a title, it's Dominic Cruz. Number two, Francis Ngannou versus Yarzinho Rosenstrike. Damn, what more can be said about this fight? This is that big fight, the Sheriff versus the Outlaw. Goliath vs Goliath Vicious KO of Overeem Artist 1 versus Vicious KO of Overeem Artist 2 There can only be one Nagano is a very scary man When he touches people, they explode He puts them to sleep Ask the people he defeated on his winning streak Curtis Blades, Cain Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos, all KO'd in the first round, all of them. Two former champs in there by the way. His hands have C4 and he's just a terrifying human being. But now, we have another equally terrifying monstrosity in Big Boy Rosenstrike. Currently 10-0 as a mixed martial arts professional, the guy has some serious crispy knockout artistry for a heavyweight. He's in a 4 fight winning streak in the UFC and spoiler alert, he finished all of his opponents. His most recent victory over Overeem, try saying that three times, saw Rosenstrike practice the art of facial recognition when he literally tore the lip off of Overeem's face. Like, dude. This fight would truly decide who is the scariest man on the planet, and the winner is almost guaranteed to fight for the heavyweight title later in the year. Number one, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. Obviously, this is going to be number one. No doubt about it. The UFC's lightweight division is absolutely insane. Khabib is champion, number two is Tony, number three is Gaethje, and we have other fighters like Dustin Poirier, Dan Hooker, Charles Oliveira, Paul Felder, and literally the list goes on. Tony is just simply a freak. He has been arguably the best lightweight in the world for the past several years and has never actually been the undisputed champion. He's on a 12 fight win streak here. Fans around the world want to see Khabib versus Tony, obviously. It was scheduled five times, but now we have Justin Gaethje. And to be honest, it's pretty unreal that Tony actually accepted this fight. He has everything to lose here. The winner is obviously going to fight Khabib. There's no way around that. But if Gaethje wins, Tony will be a 37-year-old whose 12-fight winning streak just went down the drain. And the dream match fans have been itching to see for the last 5 years may never actually happen. Dana White guarantees violence in this fight, and we know Gaethje and Tony both bring that element. Will it be a quick first round finish, or a slaughter where it's gonna go to a judge's panel? No one knows. Either way, it's a crazy fight, but it's the perfect one to really introduce the new fight island to the world. Two of the craziest, baddest dudes on the planet fighting it out for a chance to fight Khabib. Well, I mean, sign me up for that. That's gonna be one excellent fight, and we really hope it's everything that we can expect from a fight that has Tony Gaethje in the headline.